Wars cannot be seen from a distance, but they can be felt on the skin. A cold breeze that heralds a dark cloud. Now, the Grand Marshal of Mark is starting to refer to our machine neighbors as a clear and present threat to Velveteeran security. Fleets are being redeployed, and massive state subsidies for military training academies have been rolled out across the Commonwealth. Will it be worth it? I don't know. Is it right? I don't know. Will I have to fight for my life? Well, that... Now that, I know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back! My name is Nova Kane. this is part two of the Stellaris War tutorial. And before we get going, how are you? How are you doing? I hope you're doing very well. I hope you're coping with uh, the, uh, the news of the day, marvellously. Uh, I've got incredible back pain uh, at the moment, and uh, you'd think, oh, oh Nova, just, just take, just take some, some painkillers. Get some, get some Voltarol on that, and other brands are available. Um, but no, I don't have any of that, so uh, so now I make these Stellaris tutorials, because that will take the pain away. Do you know how that's going to take the pain away? Because I'm going to redirect the pain to these people! The zero, zero 001 Prime Intellect people. Well, they're not people, they're made of old bits of cars. But we're going to bring the pain. Why? Because... Uh, well, because we can, because we will, because we've got a big space fleet, the northern fleet that's not in the north because of a clerical error, uh, on the border with the 001. We're going to call them the zeros because they're zeros and we're heroes. We're going to call them the zeros from now on. Uh, so obviously in the first part of this tutorial, you learned about Cassus Belli's. You learned about borders. You learned about claiming territory. Uh, well, hopefully you learned something. If you didn't learn something, go back and watch it again. And then take some notes this time. We'll put a link in the top right of the screen. This one is where it gets real. We are going to talk about fleet compositions. We're going to talk about ship roles. We're going to talk about strategy to overrun an interstellar empire. We're going to talk about ground forces. We're going to talk about leaders. We're going to talk about weaponry. Uh, my goodness, how many things are we going to talk about? It's a lot of things that we are going to talk about. So, without further ado, the Northern Fleet here in the western fringes of the Great Velveteer Commonwealth is one of the most respected military institutions of our empire. The sailors... That, uh, well, I was going to say, like, walk the halls, but, but we're playing as molluscoids, so... Uh, slither, um, uh, spore around, maybe, uh, something like that, uh, are among the most respected military personnel ever to be born. Born, uh, reproduce... Again, these are all mammalian terms. We need to start thinking molluscoid. Um, but anyway, uh, just to reiterate, before what we said um, in the last one, we're not going to be covering in this tutorial Titans. We're not going to be covering Colossi or Juggernauts, uh, because uh, you won't be able to have them until you're quite significantly into the game. Um, which means that if you have a war in the opening stages of the game, you're kind of stuffed if you're relying on this tutorial. So we're going to keep it um, relatively simple. We're going to go up to battleships. Obviously, you won't have battleships until... Um, sometime into the game, but we're gonna cover corvettes, destroyers, cruisers, everything. Um, there is a mod that adds new ship classes. Um, I hear it's very excellent. I've not toyed with it myself. So we are going uh, vanilla here, and when I say vanilla, I mean I have got all the expansions. <laughs> with the exception of lithoids. Um, I should get lithoids, because I keep having to say oh, I've got all the expansions except lithoids. I mean, it's just a waste of syllables at the moment. Uh, but anyway, uh, we are obviously running a few mods here. Um, they're 
all graphical in nature, you can find a list of my wonderful achievement compatible, because I am an achievement whore, um, <laughs> mods in the description below. So click on that, a lovely little Steam um, list that you can just subscribe to all. Um, and I can guarantee at the time of recording that all these mods work correctly. Uh, there's no horrible crashes or things like that. Or if there are crashes, it's because my computer was made before the fall of the Roman Empire. Um, so, anyway. Let's get started. So, we already know how to start a war, as in, you know, to sign the documents and, and uh, get things going. I don't know why I'm losing so much energy a month, but I don't care about that at the moment. We, we don't care. We're going to war. I don't care about that. We've got enough saved up. And, and we could just pay the soldiers in apples. It's fine. Let's talk about ship classes. And... I guess whilst we're doing that, we're also going to talk about weaponry. So in terms of the itinerary, this is probably just going to be the same thing. Uh, it all starts and ends in the ship designer. Or F9. So the ship designer here, you can see I've, I've got a load, load of designs that I've created um, already. These designs fill different roles in a fleet doctrine. Um, the Fleet Doctrine is one that I have uh, come up with myself. You do also have War Doctrines um, that come under policies, or yeah, here we are, War Doctrine. Um, you can only, I think you can only unlock them if you've uh, finished the Supremacy Tree. Uh, yes, so you need the Supremacy Traditions, all of them, to unlock the War Doctrines. And we will be talking about that now, actually. I thought, well, why, why not just cover it now? So let's talk about War Doctrines um, and these effect pretty much a uh, wide variety of different things to do with your military. Um, so if we go to policies, wrong button, we go to policies, we go to war doctrine, we can see we've got four here. Other nations ha might have more, uh, depending on civics. Um, I bet there are mods that increase the amount as well, all kinds of stuff. Um, but we've got four here at the moment, and each one gives a benefit. Each uh, philosophy, like any policies you select here, you can change it once every 10 years. So bear that in mind. So at the moment we're running defense in depth, um, home territory fire rate plus 10%, which means that, you know, if we're fighting to defend our own systems, we fire our guns 10% more. There is a line. This far, no further. Patrick Stewart. Name the film in the comments. And I, I will love that comment and it would be wonderful. Uh, we've got hit and run. If you want to raid, combat disengagement chance plus 33%. And if you need to jump out of a battle, we'll talk about that uh, later on. Um, you get a minus 25% chance to actually having your ships blow up um, when you need to get out of dodge. So if you're dealing with uh, a, a, an enemy that's got a huge fleet and you can't take it on, but you can try to outmaneuver it, then hit and run is definitely the way to go. Also making your ships faster, of course, is going to be very, very sensible in such a scenario. Rapid deployment. Um, well, here we are. Better speed, better range. Uh, so again, this is about maneuverability. Um, we must move quickly to strike where the enemy is weakest and defend where the enemy means to attack. Maneuver is the key to success. I believe in that. I believe in that as a philosophy. Uh, your ships will be faster and they will have better range. Is that going to be appropriate for what you are facing? Maybe. It's up to you. We will equip you in this tutorial with the decision making capabilities in order to make those decisions. And then of course we've got no retreat. Uh, your ships will fire a massive 33% more, but when swords are crossed there is no turning back which means that if you if you enter a battle with a fleet that is quite clearly outclassing you in every way be prepared to lose your entire fleet there's no way to get out of there uh, it, it, it's the end but you'll go down in glory and is that really what's more important that of course depends on whether you are a Klingon. So these are the four war doctrines. As I said, uh, civics might add another one. Mods will probably add others as well. Have a look, play around. These are the four base ones at the moment. We're probably uh, we're going to probably change this from defense in depth because we're actually going to go on an on an offensive war. Um, so I'm going to go for rapid deployment actually. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I think that's going to be fine. Uh, better weapons range and better speed. Superb. Should be able to overrun our enemy nice and quickly. 
So, there are war doctrines. We covered that. Impromptu tuition. Wonderful. Now, back to F9, the ship designer. So, as I said a moment ago, we have already a large amount of designs that I've created already, including the escort. The escort is what the shipping patrols are based on. Uh, don't know what I'm talking about? Click here for a trade tutorial. Uh, it's got Quark on the thumbnail. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thumbnail for a video that, you know, maybe is all right. <laughs> oh, my back hurts. Have a, have a sip of tea. Have a sip of tea. So at the moment, we've got five broad designs um, of, of vessels, and they're each uh, according to what we've put on them, uh, given different roles. So we've got corvettes. You will start off with three corvettes at the start of your game. They're the smallest ships. They're very quick, very maneuverable. Um, a corvette swarm, you know, with lots of them is very difficult to counter. It can now be countered uh, with a hard counter because of a rework to how carriers and strike craft function, but we will talk about that uh, if you want to go all Battlestar Galactica on it. Uh, so we've got Corvettes here. Then one level up, we've got Destroyers, uh, which you don't really swarm with them. Uh, they're mainly used as screen ships, and that is a real naval doctrine. Uh, the idea is, is instead of them actually being damage dealers, they act as a support role to other craft. Uh, so we have two here. We have a point defense destroyer. We'll obviously we'll talk about what all of these are in a moment. Um, the main role of this destroyer is to shoot down enemy missiles and strike craft. It's not designed to actually be a heavy hitter. Uh, if needed, we do have a heavy hitter design. It's got some anti-shield weapons and it's got some anti-armor weapons. Uh, might not be the best design. You might have better ones, but if you've got a better one, if you know what's going on, why are you watching this video? Apart from to click on the sick ads! Thank you very much. Um, then we move up to cruisers. Cruisers are, they used to be celebrated as the ships um, that have the best of both worlds of small and maneuverable and big and beefy. They've been changed a little bit uh, since then, so there is no such thing as the do-it-all cruiser. Um, but... Being larger than corvettes and destroyers, they have, uh, you know, bigger weapon emplacements. They can form the the backbone of a fleet, um, with the exception, well, not with the exception, you know, that they, they fulfill a different role as battleships. Battleships are your heavy hitters uh, and your carriers. They are, you know, the flagships of your of your fleet. Um, so cruisers are more flexible. Uh, they can put out a lot of damage. So we've got here a, a missile cruiser design. We'll go through all of these. Uh, and that's got two torpedo tubes and a missile launcher. That's going to do a heck of a lot of damage. And if anyone comes close to it, uh, it can take them out with these disruptor arrays. You know, it's it's all planned out. Uh, but, right, what it doesn't have is any point defense. You want to spam missiles at it or strike craft? Can't do anything. Goodbye, cruiser. Uh, we've also got a carrier here. Um, you can't really carry as much as you can on a battleship. But for, for small task forces... Go for it. And of course, everything's purple because purple is gorgeous. Battleships. Battleships, as I said, they are the, the they are the flagships. They're the big heavy hitters. We can see here we've got a... Um, so I, I use these three three lesser sort of codes for which role each design is. We'll, we'll go through them. It's just a system I use. You can use it yourself if you want. Um, but this one's designed for maximum damage. So we've got very long range um, anti-shield weapons. Uh, some plasma cannons to take down enemy um, enemy ships once their shields are down. And also some laser weapons uh, to cut through armor as well. Although the plasma cannons can do that. So I, I mean I might be able to just replace all of these, these lasers. Uh, but we'll talk about that. So that's a battleship. That's the skirmish ship. This one's artillery designed for long range. You see it's a little different in terms of how it appears. Which I just think is amazing. Uh, we've got carriers. Three hangar bays in this one. Um, and then we've got an artillery craft here, which has got a spinal mount bow, can only be fitted to battleships and higher. And uh, yeah, these, these are the, the super weapons of this game. And it looks a bit like a... I was going to say like a crab, but it's not a crab. It's got mandibles. A ship has mandibles. It's amazing. Uh, and then we've got defense platforms. Defense platforms you can put uh, around stations. Uh, we can have a look here. Well, this one needs an upgrade. Um, so we've got a station at Kokonan, the Kokonan Gateway. Uh, and we can see if we wanted to press defenses. We've already got a few, actually. We've actually got quite a lot. Uh, good Lord. Um, we can just 
put stations around the uh, put defense stations around the main starbase in order to make it more effective. So we can see here it's a bit confusing because the uh, the fleet's stationed here as well. But we've got a defense platform there, uh, another one there, and then also the the ships just kind of being a little bit close. I think space traffic control is going to be a bit nervous. It's getting a bit busy in this part of space, but it's all good. So. Those are the broad categories of vessels you can equip. Each vessel has different uh, components, I suppose, you can put on it. Um, so different sections that can accommodate... This it sounds so complicated. It's not. Uh, different sections that can accommodate different kinds of equipment. And, of course, what equipment you put on your vessel defines not only its role, but your combat strategy. Now, we're going to take a very short break. And then when we're back, we are going to talk about how to inform what equipment you put on your vessels. Because each component has a benefit and a drawback. Uh, for example, this Gauss cannon, it's a mass driver, it's the kinetic under type. Uh, kinetic weapons do great, great damage to shields, but they struggle with getting through armor. Whereas if we were to change that for a gamma laser, the opposite is true. You've also not need to look about accuracy, tracking, range. Um, that will all def depend. That will all lead into how you think about what to put on your ships. Do we want to put auto cannons on it? Do we want to put Gauss cannons on it? What, what what's the difference apart from pew pew and it looking different? We're going to talk about all of that. Oh, that looks amazing. Um, also, you might have noticed the stuff at the bottom for defenses and utility slots, and the stuff on the right. Um, obviously, we are relatively into this game, 2360, so we've got all this cool stuff. We will go through all of that, um, as well as combat computers. Uh, this is possibly the most important part um, of distinguishing different roles for different craft. But, just making cool stuff is one thing. To win a war, you need to know what your enemy's got. So when we come back, we're going to be talking about combat intelligence. We'll see you then. And we're back. Thank you for sticking around. Whilst I was just on a little break there, we can see that Mark Fairbrother has just joined our Patreon squad. So we'll add him to the list that comes at the end. And uh, I think I think we'll do a shout out. I think we'll do a shout out to everyone. So Mark, thank you so much for pledging. Uh, this video has turned into like a live stream thing going on now. So thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed the content. And thank you so much for your support. Now, Let's get back to business. So we talked about ship roles, talked a little bit about ship equipment, uh, but before we get started on that, we are going to talk about combat intelligence. And you know, this this is a this is a same concept as in actual wars. Um, and you might be bugged by the fact I've got an ascension perk available, so we're going to get rid of that. Uh, we have got rid of that. You need to know what your enemy is doing. You need to know what kind of technology your enemy is using, what kind of weapons they're using, uh, what their defenses are, so that you can counter them. Uh, at the higher difficulty levels, and of course in multiplayer, information is key. Now, I mean, this this dummy war that we're going to be going on with the Zeros is is not, I don't think, is, is not going to be too taxing for the Northern Fleet, with 21,000 fleet power, uh, against a uh, a pathetic <laughs> comparative opponent, uh, but it's there for tutorial purposes only. Um, but we still need to know whether, or what, well, we still need to know how our enemy is going to try and defend themselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to build something called a listening post. Now, listening posts are wonderful little things that enable us. Can I? Where's the tooltip? I want the tooltip. I need a tooltip. Can we, can we do it on here? Is it still on here? Um, just, here we go. Um, so basically you can see there towards the bottom of the tooltip, ship hyperlane detection range plus four. So normally um, you can detect stuff from one jump away. Um, on our ships here, we've got uh, these gravitic sensors that means we can detect things from up to four lanes away anyway. So whilst the fleet is there, uh, we don't really need a listening post. But if the fleet wasn't there, we would like one. 
Why would we like one? Because it means that if our enemy chooses to deploy any kind of military hardware within four jumps, so one, two, three, four, all the way up to the Afkashan system, which is halfway inside their entire empire pretty much, only three jumps to their border, um, we can see what's going on. We can see where their fleets are, how big they are, how they're equipped, um, and we can plan accordingly. Now at the moment, we can't actually see any of their fleets because they're probably up here in the north because they're fighting a war already in the north um, against the Uwe Giovanni Enlightened Kingdom. So they're probably up there uh, trying to, you know, not be destroyed. But in that scenario, we can still look at their station because there is a station in this system. It's pathetically pathetic. Um, <laughs> I feel a bit bad because going to war with these people. It's like kicking over a small child. You feel bad. About it. I mean, you're going to win, but you feel bad about it. Um, so if we have a look at the starbase, we just this is this is the key button here. Magnify, zoom and enhance on this little button. And here we are. We can see some armaments. And these armaments give you a broad idea of the kind of technological level you're dealing with and whether your enemy is shifting one way or the other in terms of their defenses. So we can see here uh, that they've unlocked space torpedoes, but only level one. Uh, we can see here that they're using disruptors and they're using class five laser weapons. Um, we can imagine that uh, enemy fleets are going to be using the same level of technology, uh, which at this part, at this moment, with the terms of the disruptors and the lasers, is relatively on par with our own. Uh, we can see that their reactors aren't as good as ours. Um, it would be better if we could see a fleet itself, because then we can see, you know, are they using loads of corvettes? Are they using not many corvettes, but some battleships? You know, how's it going with that? Um, we can see utilities. Now, we didn't even cover this in the ship designer, but we will. Uh, we can see that they're using a balanced defensive system, so shields and armor interspersed 50-50. And then we've got a, a fire control um, as well. On, so this is in their little starport. Again, it would be a lot better to be able to have a look at an actual fleet, but we don't have one at the moment. And to be honest, I'm, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. If you feel that you can't go to war because you are concerned about lack of intelligence, you can do two things. Either you can sign an agreement with a neighboring empire that might be able to see one of their uh, fleets, and then you can have a look at it uh, by go <laughs> this whole <laughs> this whole neighboring empire is also what under, under occupation. This is not a good place of the galaxy to be in. Um, so their neighboring uh, empire is the Uvishvani Enlightened Kingdom. Um, that itself is under occupation from the Mercantile Union. Oh, it's, it's a mess. Um, but if we wanted, if we wanted to, we could uh, ask the owners of this territory to share with us their sensor data. And that might mean that we can see a fleet. Um, so if we go to here and we go to offer trade deal, we would go to information, uh, well, on their side, we would go to information and active sensor link. So we get there all of their vision. Minus 1,000. They are never going to trade this with us, no matter what we give them. I mean, let, let's just say I'm going to give them, I'm going to give you five solar systems for a, a, a Zoom call with you. No, not going to do it. <laughs> so, that's not going to happen. Uh, but that's how we would pursue that. Um, if there's a modifier that gives a minus 1,000, that means they ain't going to do it. It's just not going to happen. Don't worry. Um, so they're suspicious. They're less. They're going to become less suspicious uh, over time. But yeah. Not our friends. Not our friends. So, what can we do? What can we do? We can build a mega structure. There is such a thing as... Have we have we unlocked this yet? If we, we get our... Can we do it? Uh, yes, here we are. So, we could build a sentry array. A sentry array will give you full vision over everything inside its range. Um, and the range increases depending on how far along the construction chain you are. There are four chains in total after you've built the foundation. The sentry array, when it's fully constructed, will give you vision over everything. Every fleet, every ship, everything in the entire galaxy. Which is amazing and uh, maybe nerfed because it's just crazy. Uh, but yeah, you can see everything. And not only can you see it, you can go, you can dive in. Uh, so this ship here, let's say this was a fleet and it was actually in the top end of the galaxy really far away. Uh, we can still click this wonderful button. We can see everything it's got. 
You can see everything that everyone's got forever. That's what the Sentry Array does. It's amazing. If you're going to be going to war a lot against opponents that might actually be able to defend themselves, then consider having it. So, we have learned so far that our enemy is likely to use a balanced defense doctrine, shields and armor. That means that we need to use a balanced defensive doctrine that deals with armor and shields equally. Um, they probably have missiles and torpedoes as they've equipped one onto their station. Um, whether they're going to be using lots of them, we don't know because we don't have the intelligence. Are we going to go to war anyway? Yeah, you bet we are. So now we go and we're actually going to look at different kinds of equipment that we can put on our ships. And we are now going to cover defenses and, and uh, utility slots here. Uh, core system components. How do we get these components? They all appear under the technology trees for physics. Uh, oh, we're actually researching weapons now. Uh, physics or engineering. As a general rule, physics is for pew pew weapons that you'd find in Star Wars. Engineering for variants of weapons we already have in the real world, but spacey. So at the moment, this is just a big old gun. And I mean big. That's a big gun. It's giga gun. Well, cannon, but very large. So that's how we get them. Uh, you won't find any in society research, but you can find things that are going to help in society research, such as a fleet command limit. What a fleet? We'll cover that. My god, this video is becoming long. We might have to do this in three bits. Good lord. But we will in this video, because I've said it like seven times. We will cover equipment and fleet designs. So, we've got our northern fleet here. Uh, it's a mishmash of corvettes, destroyers, cruisers, and battleships. You can give, you can see a broad overview of how the uh, of how it's set up here in the top um, with the different icons. Basically, four diamonds for battleships, three for cruisers, two for destroyers, and one for corvettes. And we can see that we've got six capital ships, battleships, six cruisers supporting them, nine destroyers, and twenty corvettes. And each of these. Um, is comprised of different designs. So we can see here in the Corvette group, we've got 12 Simfin class Corvettes, SKR for Skirmisher, Damage Dealers, and 8 Korolev Missile class Corvettes, MIS there, uh, designed to fire a load of missiles and hope some of them hit. Uh, destroyers, we've got 4 um, Skirmisher class, Skirmisher roll, really, uh, and 5 point defense, so that's screen ships against missiles, torpedoes, and strike craft. Uh, and then cruisers, we've got two carriers and four missile boats. Um, and we've got one artillery piece and five carriers uh, in the battleship line there at the back. These big boys. Big boys. And you see they look different. They look different because we put different things on them, which I think is amazing. But there we are. Perhaps I'm just easily impressed. Right, now we're going to press F9 for the last time and actually talk about equipment. So here we are on the ship designer screen. First of all, we need to address uh, the different components that we can put on it. We're going to talk about these little diamonds and the little colours, and it's all very pretty. Uh, so we're going to go to new design. Also, just before we do, um, this button here, when you unlock a new type of ship, so by type I mean, go, go away, go away. Um, I mean sort of corvettes, destroyers, cruisers, and battleships, it will automatically create sort of a bog standard design for you. I don't like them, so I untick this box. But I think it will do it anyway. It will give you one bare bones design that you will immediately delete and replace with what you have learned in this tutorial. So we're going to start with a new design. Um, we can choose what type of ship we wish to design. We're going to take a Corvette. And we are going to we see, oh, what? where's my Corvette? What? What's, what's going on? There's no Corvette here. This is not going to be very effective for our military strategy to have a ship that doesn't exist. So we're going to click section up here. And we can see with different uh, kinds of ships, we get more sections to choose from. Uh, so there are, there's only one available for Corvettes, two for destroyers, and three for cruisers and battleships. Back to our new design. It doesn't exist. We go to section and then we can choose a section. So now we need to address before we can make an informed decision what these little uh, icons mean. So we've got weapon slots and utility slots. Uh, the utility slots are the ones at the bottom, weapon slots are the ones at the top. Weapon slots, you get S, you get M, you get L, and then you have, uh, I think, XL as well for a spinal mount, or just X. Um, those are the sizes. 
In general terms, larger weapons have longer range, however, have less tracking, so faster ships will be able to outmaneuver them. So, for example, if you've got a battleship going up against corvettes, uh, the corvettes are likely to be able to dodge most of the fire from that large weapon because they are faster. Uh, that comes into tracking. We will talk about that. So, S for one small weapon slot. And we can see in the interceptor, all it is is three small weapon slots. Uh, that means that's why our skirmisher here just has weapons on it. It's an interceptor class ship. Um, Missile boat will have one weapon slot, one small weapon slot on it, and a G slot for guided weapons. Um, so torpedoes and missiles. You want to make a missile boat like this, like the Karolav missile boat class here. Just, just do the missile boat, and then yes, you've only got one launcher, but build a load of them. You've got twelve corvettes with one launcher each. How many of launchers is that? It's twelve. Picket ships. Uh, I generally don't use uh, corvettes for picket ships. I think that the other two uh, roles are much better. But basically, we're looking at point defense. So those are weapons that won't really be very effective against big other ships, like other corvettes or destroyers or whatever. But they are going to be effective against enemy ordnance, those torpedoes, those missiles, and those strike craft. Uh, going in, going, oh, this is our goal two, where uh, time to target is three seconds. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, He's on my tail! Blah, 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 all that stuff. Yeah, forget all that. Shoot him down with a point defense weapon. And that's really what the destroyers are for. Destroyers make excellent picket ships. Utility slots. Uh, we've got, like, before S, M, S, M, and L, there are no X or super duper ones uh, for utility slots. Basically, you're looking at shields, you're looking at armor. Um, so let's just pick one. Uh, we've got here, under S, well, there we go. We've got neutronium armor, it's class five arm. Oh, I, can I lock this? Yes, I can. I talked about how to lock it in my own video, silly boy. Um, you've got neutronium armor, it's a class five armor. Um, it's armor, you know, if you've got your, if you're just starting out, you have class one armor. It's still armor, it's just, you know, not as fancy. And hyper shields. Hyper shields. You'll start off with deflectors, and then you go up to shields, and then you can go all Star Trek about it. Shields at 40%! But what always bugged me about that is when shields are at 40%, the whole bridge is still blowing up. Uh, you know, if you've got a shield, surely it's shielding you. You know? Do you know what I mean? Surely when the shields are down, then start st stuff starts blowing up. But, you know, your shields are still up. Why Why is the console blowing up? Why is Jolly LaForge being blown across the room? I... Uh, Anyway, so we can um, put either one on our slots here. What's the difference? Why would you choose one over another? So, neutronium armor, or well, just armor, uh, obviously they come in three varieties, basically gives hit points to a special category called armor. Very intuitive. Um, and that's uh, separate from your hull. So we see here ship stats down here at the bottom. 300 points of hull, and then we've also got armor as well. We've not, we haven't got any armor on it at the moment, but would you look at that? Would you look at that? We're just uh, clicking and um, clicking again to put it on there. Look at that! We've now got 290 armor points. We've doubled the effective health of this tiny little ship by putting some armor on it. But if we have a weapon like a gamma laser, we can see here, or, or a normal laser, if you don't have a class 5 one, uh, we can see here that that's going to do plus 50% damage to armor. It's not going to, it's going to have the same damage to hull, but it's going to do 50% um, more damage, to, I was going to say double damage there. It's going to do plus a half, plus a half damage to armor, and that's only coming out of this armor hit point pool here, down here. It's just feeling like World of Warships now. So, if you've got an enemy that's only using lasers, Maybe don't use armor. You know, it's a good idea. You can see that minus 50% to shield damage. Shields, we'll put shield in here. Two things just happened. One, we've got some shield points now added on to our full uh, health pool. But our power went down. Yeah, now it gets more complicated. Power went down. Whew. <laughs> Power is generated by your reactor. What? I know. Over here. You'll start off with this one. Slamming some uranium particles together. Then helium-3. Then 
space stuff. <laughs> Zero point reactor. Just, just make an energy out of gravitational stuff. It's awesome. Um, so basically, the idea is, is that for each one, uh, you get more power to play around with. And excess power will give you more damage, essentially, if you've got excess power lying around. So we can see here, <clears throat> if we just put some, some basic uh, lasers, lasers on this ship here, we can do the configuration like this. Um, and we've got plus 34 power units, megawatts, 34 megawatts left over. Um, and, although it doesn't say in this tooltip, we can see our damage here. This is an average damage per day uh, in a battle um, is 18.48. Uh, well, it does say in the tooltip now. It didn't used to. Uh, excess power is increasing that by 1%. Hooray, hooray, hooray. If we wanted to replace one of these with a shield, well, I mean, now we've got... Uh, power deficit, so we can't actually save this design. It's no longer valid. Um, but uh, it's gone down to 18.4, 18.7, 19.1. Uh, if we don't have any shields at all. Um, but if we take the reactors down, then we are. 18.4, 19.1. Excess power is good, but now we don't have any shields. So if we come against, come up against some, some dudes packing uh, some. Uh, weapons that are stopped by shielding, such as uh, a laser, then we're kind of, you know, going to be blown up, so we don't like that. <laughs> Guided weapons? Torpedoes? Missiles? In a broad rule, torpedoes move slower, are easier to shoot down, but pack a mighty wallop um, compared to missiles. Whirlwind missiles um, do less damage, but there are loads of them. Um, the idea is to overwhelm enemy point defense systems. And they look really cool in a battle as well. So, um, in our weapon slots, these are the orange boxes here. We've got a variety of weapons here. Um, some of which you may not have. Some of which, of course, are unlocked by technologies you won't have at the beginning of the game. At the start of the game, you'll just have a Gauss cannon, a, or not a Gauss cannon, a mass driver, whatever the um, first version of it is. Can we? Yeah, there we are. So you'll have a red laser, and you'll have a mass driver. That's all you have. We're going to hide obsolete components to make sure we're only using the very best for our navy. And each one has um, b benefits and drawbacks in terms of uh, shields and armor. So lasers, as we talked about, suffer with shields. Minus 50% damage output. Once the shields are down, though, whoa, it's party time for laser users. Um, there's a reason we're skipping these two for now. Gauss cannons, it's the exact same, but the opposite. When the shields are up, oh, it's party time if you're manning a gas cannon or a mass driver or whatever. But when those shields are down and you need to get through that armor, it's time to bring the counselors out because everyone's going to get a bit depressed because they can't do anything. Um, Stormfire auto cannons. Huge benefit to shields. Rubbish against armor. You've got to think they're only shooting little pew pew bullets. Uh, but once the shields and armor are both down, they do a plus 25% damage to hull. Um, and hull, here we see 300 with our corvette. When that hits zero, your ship goes pop. So, for certain situations, definitely going to think be the thing to do. Uh, we've got mining drone lasers. That's a research project if you have mining drones in your empire. Uh, when you get to a certain part of the game, they don't become very uh, effective in terms of the damage output. But we can see there they do a whopping 75% bonus to hull damage. They are experts at cutting stuff open. You know, go for it. Uh, one that I do still use, and again, it's one you have to research um, due to a sort of galactic event, is the Null Void Beam. This one's crazy. Against armor and hull, forget about it. F shields, 400%! 400%, it's crazy. Um, just shields, forget about it. So we've, we've got ships that basically their whole job is to take out enemy shielding and then to forget about it. So we can see here, this is our main battleship design, the Savar. Uh, it's got two large null void beam projectors. 
uh, forget about it when it comes to armor and hull. Forget about it when it comes to armor and hull. Uh, but 400% shield damage. The idea is you take the shields down with these, then the people who are running these weapons can go and have a little break, while the rest of it absolutely cuts everything else to SHIT. Um, we've also got these energy cannons, plasma cannons here. Uh, let's have a look at what they do, or what they can do. Uh, so yeah, they were, we're coming back round now, because I think these two are not more complicated, but uh, slightly less intuitive perhaps than the other two. Um, and of course we're using M sizes, medium sizes. So we can see here, against shields, again, forget about it. Um, but armor, pff, double damage double damage against armor. If your enemy's packing a lot of armor, plasma cannons. Plasma cannons and lasers. That's it. Also, when defenses are down, 50% hull damage is just gonna, it's gonna take them out. Take them out. Plus 50%. Amazing. Uh, range 60, relatively high range. Um, well, at, well, 75 there. 60. Average range <laughs> for, uh, for a medium-sized weapon. Phase disruptors. Disruptor weapons. Forget defenses. Forget it. All damage goes directly to the hull points. Um, nothing can be done. Drawback. Low range. Low tracking. Um, and relatively low damage. But forget defenses. It just doesn't matter. So again, something that potentially can be used. Uh, I've decided not to use them in my current um, setup here because the range of 50 is going to be the lowest of all of them. So what's the point? You know, if I can get the same effects there, if you just look at the, the raw damage output and you see there's a range there between 1 and 75. It means that on one day, uh, well, every uh, six days when it fires, uh, it can do one damage or 75. One damage is not, I suppose that's a like glancing blow or something, but it just, it's just rubbish. Um, whereas this will do a minimum of 50. Again, not great, but it's also got a lower cooldown. Sorted. We'll talk about accuracy tracking and range as well. Ah, uh, when we get into the ninth hour of this video. So these are your basic weapon emplacements. Um, these are the ones that you can put in the orange boxes. Let's choose a different one. Let's go now to point defense. P. P for pure mayhem. Um, guardian point defenses and flak artillery are going to be your main orders of the day. So if we uh, go to um, the original one, you'll start off with sentinel point defense most likely. Um, or if you don't, it'll be very, very high up in the tech tree. So you should be able to get it quite quickly. Um, and then flak batteries as well. What's the difference? This one's point defense and uh, energy po energy based point defense. This one is uh, flat cannons. Uh, well, it has flak in the name, so it's kinetic, uses actual bullets and things like that that you have to load in and go clear, poof, and things like that. Um, and we can see here that it does damage, a pathetic amount of damage, um, high accuracy, high tracking, uh, and we've got an average damage there of six, minus 75% armor damage on all point defenses. Um, but we can see there, uh, accuracy 75%, tracking 30% bad. So what's the key difference? Slightly higher damage on the Guardian point defense, but the tracking on flak is way bigger, way bigger. So if you're up against very fast moving objects like missiles, um, then flak artillery is going to be your best bet. If you're up against relatively slower moving projectiles like torpedoes, go for guardian point defenses. Uh, both do uh, minus 75% armor damage though. So if you've got some armored torpedoes, then maybe pack some more on or pack some more ships with more on. More the better. <laughs> moving on from point defense. Never neglect it. It's easy to go, oh no, it's not an actual gun. It doesn't go pew pew against the ship, so it's not cool and I'm not going to use it because I'm cool. Yeah, you're going to get your ass handed to you, so use it. Just use it. Carriers. That's our H. Uh, we can see here on our carrier here. Uh, the Savar carrier. Oh, they're called the same thing. Savar and Savar. That's not good. Need to change that. Um... But we go to our big carry here, the Vilfin class. Um, we've got... Uh, and how do we get these different um, configurations? Choose sections. Just like we did with the Corvette. 
Obviously, the sections that are available differs according to which kind of ship you're developing. Hangar bow and, and carrier core, we get H for strike craft. Um, so you'll start off with maybe a scout wing or, uh, again, you'll either start with it or it'll be very early on in the tech tree. Um, and they come with their own thing. So this wing comes with eight units. Um... 100% shield penetration. Yeah, they'll fly under the shields. They don't care. Um, each one will do between 4 and 8 damage a day. Uh, so average damage, 20 per day, which is actually kind of high. Um, good tracking. They never miss. Uh, range is very poor, though. They need to get really quite up close. They've got 30 points of hull. And they move at 550 space units per second. Uh, or per day. So, Or per something. I don't really know. I don't really know what the scale is with that. It, anyway, um, and then we can we can go through. So all of them have the same bonuses. Shields, forget about it, and they do plus damage to armor because I guess they can find out where the seams are and blow them up. Um, and you can see their accuracy and tracking uh, for the advanced strike craft is one hundred percent. These people do not miss. So if you're strike craft against strike craft, you know, yes, they've got eighty percent evasion, tracking one hundred percent. So. Pfft, doesn't matter. They're going to hit everything. They hit everything. Again, I've just touched on stuff we haven't covered. Like, you know, what is tracking? What, what are you talking about, Nova? You're getting ahead of yourself. Entirely possible. And I apologize. We'll come back to that. And then we'll call it a day. Because otherwise this video is going to turn into an opus of, of stuff. Um, and that leaves us with one left. Uh, and that's the special super weapons here. Only available on battleship designs and larger. We've got our lovely mandibles. And we can get var various special weapons. Uh, so we've got a, uh, a tachyon lance. That's an energy weapon. Um, armor. Pff, forget about it. Hull plus half damage. Amazing. Minimum 800 damage. Shoots every 8 days. 85% accuracy. Zero tracking. It's only against big big things like stations and other battleships um and then we've got uh, particle lance so these are both energy weapons the tachyons an upgrade of the particle we've then got an arc emitter all defenses are pointless but it might do one damage minimum one damage top 30 and then we've got mega cannons we're upgrading it to giga cannons as well uh huge against shields armor it struggles with on here, minus 50% against shield. So we've got the same balance between lasers and kinetic weapons as we have on the basic. Uh, well, not basic, but the more traditional weaponry. Uh, we've got some neutron launchers here. Neutron launchers are a bit special uh, because they only come in large. And also they are essentially torpedoes, but they're not in a torpedo slot. They are classed as energy weapons, um, not munitions on their own. Uh, so they follow a different set of rules. So even though uh, they, it looks like a torpedo, because it really does look like a torpedo, uh, they're not actually torpedoes. Just to make you more, more, and more confused. Uh, so the energy weapons, like the disruptors and like the plasma cannons we talked about earlier, uh, shields, they struggle with those. Everything else is fine, plus 75% hull damage, minimum 468. Uh, can they be shot down? No, because they're not a munition. Good lordy lord. Can they be dodged? Absolutely. 0% tracking. So there we go. <sighs> Is there anything we've missed? We covered oh, cloud lightning. <laughs> I forgot about cloud lightning. Yes, so you might have um, weapons that can only appear on L-class mounts, such as kinetic artillery. Um, again, when you understand how this tooltip operates... Uh, and the, the benefits and the drawbacks of different weapons, you know, what range is, you know, in the context of this game, then you can figure it out. It's not too bad. Uh, so kinetic artillery here is great for artillery, for staying well back. You've got 120 range there, which is more than double some other weapons. Uh, the large plasma cannon here is 80. Um, so, well, plus half <laughs> so it's far uh cloud lightning here um again that's something you research off one of the anomalies not not anomalies i think it's from void clouds perhaps or that might be the null void beam uh something one of them um that gives shield and armor penetration forget about it but again like all of these you know force lightning kind of things uh you're rolling the dice in terms of damage output only one damage is possible 
there is a 1 in 136 chance that you will fire and you go, oh, amazing, it's fired, and you only do one damage, and then you feel bad about yourself. So, take that into consideration. Uh, and then the null void beam, which we've already celebrated. Whew, all right. That's your lot. Those are all your weapons. Uh, we're going to talk about defenses in a moment. We're going to take a very short break. Uh, I like to say that because we're on TV. But we're not really on TV, but I like to feel like we are. Um, so <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk about defensive slots. We've already talked about uh, the armor and shields and how they affect them. Uh, we are going to talk about um, the auxiliaries uh, or the, kind, you know, the, the tools that you can put here. Um, as well as what this stuff all means on the right hand side of the screen. So enjoy your ad. Hopefully it's not for raid blah blah legends. And we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Hopefully you enjoyed your, your ad. <laughs> um, right, so we've talked about defenses. Now let's talk about uh, tools. So they use power. They uh, cost alloys or, you know, other things perhaps. Um... Are they all just alloys? Ah, uh, the shield capacitors use um, gas as well. Um, so let's have a let's have a broad overview of these. Uh, you won't have all of them. I think you'll only start with the reactor booster um, type one, or maybe even not that. Again, I, I keep just saying stock phrases. So here's today's stock phrase. Um, you'll start with it very high in your tech tree if you don't have it already. Uh, so we've got four broad categories here. Um, we've got reactor boosters. They will increase your power. Uh, so we can see here this will generate an additional uh, 100 power. Uh, the original version 20. But when you're dealing with, you know, early game ships, uh, that's, you know, can make all the difference. And remember, more power means more pew pew, which is always good. Um, so reactor boosters, that's what they do. They're the most simple. That's it. Uh, auxiliary fire control. Chance to hit plus five. So if you're going up against, you know, particularly scraggly, squirmy enemies that like to dodge, uh, then put some auxiliary fire controls on there. They do stack. We've got two of them at the moment. So plus ten in total. Uh, so that's going to be good. Shield capacitors. Uh, give a ten percent boost to your shield hit points. So at the moment we're running... Um, 2,610 shield points on this battleship. Put some shield capacitors in there. We're now at 3,100. Oh my, oh my, oh my. So if you want a heavy shield design, um, obviously it's percentage, so the more shields you put on it, uh, the more effective it will be. Um, but now, now we've run out of power. You see, you see, you see, you see. Uh, but if you wanted to do that, um, we could probably do all that. We just need to take some uh, weapons that don't take as much power. So let's replace these with Gauss cannons. Uh, we see it's not done much, but it has reduced our power consumption a little bit. So that's something you might want to consider if you want to put more shields on. Uh, afterburners plus evasion. Evasion is good. Evasion is the opposite of tracking. Uh, so, you know, evasion means that you're less likely to be hit by a weapon because you're, you know, squirmy and scraggly um it also means that you're faster uh, in deployment so you know the moving across uh, a system is going to be quicker regenerative hull tissue uh hull and armor shields will always regenerate um but hull and armor obviously won't this basically means that they will uh plus one regen per day this is in battle as well uh, but it means that effectively if you've got a, a deep space task force and it's not going to be able to repair at a shipyard um, for long periods of time, it can repair itself. So it does take time to do that, obviously. Um, so plus one uh, for this ship, let's say it was almost destroyed, had one left, it would take just shy of ten years <laughs> to regenerate all of its hull uh, via this. Uh, but of course, we could say five years if we put two on. Um... That's still a long time, though. <laughs> there we are. Uh, so, regenerative hull tissue. Uh, you might not get that. You have to uh, do a specific thing, I think, with um, space amoebas um, to get this. Just like you have to do specific things with um, uh, the mining drones to get the uh, mining drone laser there. So, research space wildlife. So it's good for you. Not the space, not the Tenyaki though. The space worlds, you leave them alone. You leave them alone. Otherwise, I'll be very unhappy with you. Now, on the right-hand side, we've got core system components. Power, 
the bigger the better, unless you're really worried about cost. Um, bigger the better, because you do get bonuses for having more energy than you can spend. Uh, then we've got our FTL drive. Um, so at the moment we've got a jump drive. Uh, we might leave jump drives to the next video. Um, but we can see here, you'll start off with the basic hyperdrive. Um, so... It's, that's the base. Uh, means that you can, you know, go faster than light and have an interstellar civilization. All very nice things. Uh, and then we have upgrades of that. Hyperdrive 2 pl uh, means that you uh, spend less time, you know, when you're at the edge of the system. And it, the, the ships go womp, 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 womp as they're charging their drives. 25% uh, less time it will take doing that, which is good. Um, it's cut in half on the third one. And then you get into jump drives. We'll talk more about them in the next video because they do have some uh, particular mechanics in them. But basically, uh, if we wanted to, I mean, we can't at the moment because uh, the, the ships are still recharging because we've just jumped to the system. But we'd be able to, if we just pick another fleet that hasn't just jumped, like this one, the Western Fleet. You see that ring? Yeah, we can go anywhere. Provided the borders aren't closed, we can go anywhere. We want to appear in this system. There we are. Done. And in, I think, four or five days, they'll just appear. They'll just go. But then, massive penalties to speed and weapons damage as well. So, it's it's a deployment strategy. It's not a tactical thing to do. Um, because your ships are going to be much less effective until they've recharged their jump engines. So, I'm just going to right-click there to cancel that jump. Now, going back, uh, we have uh, impulse thrusters. This is our slower than light um, maneuvering. You'll start off with chemical thrusters. Each one has uh, ship evasion um, bonuses as well as a base chance to evade. Uh, so the ships will move faster um, in sublight as well. Um, they will, at the very least, give you a base ship speed of uh, plus up to 75% as well as chance to evade, uh, which is good, especially for smaller ships that are weaving in between enemy fire. Uh, sensors, you'll start off with a radar system. You can detect enemy fleets up to two jumps away. Upgrade it to gravitic sensors. You get plus four and a bonus to tracking. Um, then we get into the good stuff. The combat computers. Um, you'll start off with a base combat computer. The other ones enable you to pick particular roles for the ships you're using. Um, the options differ depending on what type of ship. We've got a battleship here. Uh, the options will differ depending on that. But, you know, we can have a look through. Uh, so we've got... Um, these are basically uh, different categories, I would suppose. Uh, so we've got uh, precognitive interface. So basically, technology, super technology, awesome technology. You know, just like with the lasers, one, two, three, but they haven't got the numbers on them now. Um, they should do, really, but they don't. Um, so we're just going to look at the precognitive interface. We can have a picket strategy. The ship will close to 30 distance units. Um, at 30, pretty much every weapon will be in range of the enemy then. Um, it will have a faster fire rate, and it's better at tracking, because it's designed to be up close and personal. Uh, we then have a line ship. So imagine battleships off the coast of some... Uh, some enemy strongholds, you know, they're just firing. Ba-boom! Uh, so those are your line ships. Ultimately, that's the realm of cruisers, in my opinion. Uh, you get a bonus to fire rate, uh, tracking, and a chance to hit. Uh, but you're further away, so smaller enemy craft won't be able to target you. Then we go to artillery. It goes to 80 and is designed for long-range bombardment, you know, without uh, the opportunity for a response. So for ships that are holding back and firing, you know, huge amounts of firepower to particularly larger enemy targets, artillery is a good way to go. Obviously, you'll need weapons that have ranges of 80 or higher. And then we have the new one, the carrier. Uh, ship engagement range is plus 75, so it can go so far away. So the ship will stay at extreme range of 150 units and fire long range weapons and it's most importantly launch uh, attack squadrons. Um, so right there at the back, they're going to be out of range of the majority of enemy craft, uh, but they can participate in the battle by launching their squadrons. Um, using this on a ship like this, 
uh, where none of the weapons have a range above 100. 100 for the whirlwind missiles, that's it, uh, would mean it's kind of pointless, so <laughs> keep an eye on that. So in terms of differences between the, the different types, battleships and cruisers have the exact same, they've got four. Destroyers have the same, but they don't have carriers because they can never carry um, strike crafts. I mean, you know, that would be kind of very cozy in there if they did. Um, Corvettes have a special one. Uh, so Corvettes can have picket like anyone else. They also have swarm. Uh, point blank range. They'll try and deal as much as possible. They'll get right in there. Um, and the objective is just to overwhelm the enemy with superior numbers. Uh, I mean, it's like, you know, if you're attacked by a swarm of hornets, you maybe could take one or two hornets down, but the hornets are going to win this battle. Unless, of course, you yourself are a swarm of hornets, in which case it's just a battle like any else. Uh, but enough metaphors involving winged insects. Those are combat roles. Those define how you uh, get your ships to act in battle from a tactical perspective. You're dealing with the strategy. From the tactical perspective, combat roles will tell your admirals and captains what to do. Now, finally, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, in this open... I was going to say Opeth. It's a band I don't even listen to. Opus of video. Um, we can see here uh, a couple of things that are very important, uh, such as fleet size. Um, we've also got a leader there. We'll talk about leaders in the next video because they've got loads of different things on them um, that are important. Well, I know we also haven't talked about evasion. Uh, we'll get into it in more detail later. This is just becoming a very long video. Basically, more evasion the better. The smaller the guns, the more um, they are able to deal with evasion. Um, bigger guns, bigger damage. Bigger guns uh, more likely to have their shots missed by smaller targets that have bigger evasion. Um, so that's that's the base principle behind it. If we look at corvettes, um, we can see here we've got an evasion of 90% because of the other stuff as well. 60% base for a corvette. Um, yeah, they're going to dodge a lot. That's the whole point. Especially if they're in swarm mode, which of course they are. Why aren't they using the best interface? We can get better. We'll do that. We'll sort of save that design. Yeah, that's that's how you upgrade, by the way. If you click auto upgrade as well, if you unlock a better kind of gun or whatever, it will automatically upgrade it to the latest version. So always good to have that on. Um, also, ugh, this is not focused at all. Um, <laughs> also, uh, let's say we make a new ship here. And we make it like that. And we say, okay, I want to have some flat guns. I want to have some short range disruptors. I want to have a big old cannon on it. Uh, oops. Great! Do I really want to bother about this? I mean, if we're using a balanced strategy for shields and armor, just auto-complete. There it is. And it's also put an afterburner on there as well. Hooray! Done. I could then save that design, uh, make a nice name for it, uh, and then save it. Done. Don't need to worry about it. If you're uh, sort of microing how you're managing your defenses, uh, then obviously don't do that. But otherwise, nice and easy. And if you completely cock up, clear design, start again. Wonderful. So fleet size, uh, this, so you've got a, a maximum naval capacity. We talked about that previously. Um, if you go over it, uh, every single ship in your empire will have an increased upkeep, which is bad. Um, but if you've got the economy to support it, go for it. Doesn't really matter. I mean, it's kind of the same as uh, Empire Sprawl, really. Um, if we go to the fleet size, however, Basically, you can only put so much into one fleet. You can't just make a super doom stack of every single ship you've ever built, ever. Um, because that wouldn't be as fun. So, there is a fleet manager screen. My goodness. Um, and we can create different fleets. And in those different fleets, we just click on new fleet here. We've got all the designs that we've produced, including Federation ships as well. Oh, God, we we'll have to talk about that one in the next video. Um... And we can uh, balance the different roles we've got. So let's say we wanted a, a Corvette uh, system. Uh, so we would just add our Corvette designs. One, two. Uh, we can have up to 150 at the moment. Each Corvette is worth one point. Each destroyer is worth two points. Um, each cruiser is worth four points. Each battleship is worth eight points. Pretty simple. Let's get rid of these. So let's just say we wanted a Corvette task force. 
Let's say we wanted, I'm just going to hold shift and click for 10. Let's say we wanted a relatively small group. Let's say we wanted 10 Corvettes and holding back whilst the Corvettes overwhelm the enemy. We want to pummel them with missiles. So we'll have five missile boats. Total of 15 Corvettes, 15 points. Um, we can just click this button to spend the money and, and, and create that right now. Um, and we can uh, assign a leader. We should be able to. Huh, maybe maybe it has, has to actually exist. Yeah, you, you can't have a theoretical fleet with a leader on it, I suppose. Um, and then, yeah, we would just be able to, to create that. Um, we can choose where its home base is. So these are all of our um, uh, military facilities. So facilities with either an anchorage. Uh, actually, no, it's not just facilities. It's every, every station. Every station you've got. Uh, including shipyards, you know, the anchorages, every single upgraded space station you've got um, will be their headquarters. And so when you create it by clicking this button, uh, if you've got enough cash to pay for it, um, then they will gather at the home base you've selected. So if we want them to go to their home world, they will be at Makar. It also means, and we'll actually get into the nitty gritty of battles in the next video, that if there is a scenario where you lose a battle and they have to evacuate, they'll, let, they'll go back to their home station. That's where they'll reappear. What we can do is we can just reinforce all fleets all at once by clicking this button. And that will spend as much as possible, as much as you have, uh, to restock all of the fleets you've planned out. So we've got three broad fleets here. They've got relatively the same doctrines. Um, but they're not full. Like this one here, uh, <coughs> we've got... Um, a total of 110 here. We can see uh, 10 Corvettes, 10 out of 10. Uh, but we don't have as much many destroyers as we planned for. We don't have as many cruisers or battleships. We can replace all of those with one button by clicking this. Done. And now we can see uh, that they are being built. We can see where they're being built. And when they're built, they will automatically uh, move to join the fleet itself in the Kokonan system. Which is wonderful. Which is great. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really concerned about how long this video is. Um, <laughs> we are going to call it. Uh, yes, war, war is war is hell. War is complicated. Uh, so next video, we're going to actually take this northern fleet that's in the west. And we're going to go. We're going to go pew pew. And we're going to talk about ground forces, planetary invasions, orbital bombardments. Good lordy lord. Surrender mechanics. White pieces. Status quos. What is that about? Oh my goodness. You could spend 400 hours on the wiki. Or you could wait for the next Novocaine video. It's your choice. I hope you make the right one. Many thanks to all of our patrons, including Mr. Mark Fairweather, who joined us today whilst this video is being recorded on the 8th of May. Um... So thank you very much to him. And of course, all of the wonderful, amazing people that are flittering across the bottom of your screen right now. Thank you so much, so much, honestly, um, to your support. It, it literally makes the difference. It really does. Um, so with that in mind, I, I'm sorry that there's going to be a third video in this series. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed your time with me today. Uh, happy hunting, and we'll see you next time in Stellaris. I've been Nova Kane. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're coping okay. I will say, good night.